everybody. Welcome back. It is September 27th, 2022, 2.41 p.m. We are waiting on the latest update on the actual wind speeds of Hurricane Ian. We are nearly at a Category 4 storm right now. As you can see here on the Sapphire Simpson scale would be 130 miles an hour up to 156 before a Cat 5. And at this hour right now, most if not all the spaghetti plots have this thing making landfall between Tampa and Cape Coral along the western coastlines of Florida. As you can see here, Hurricane Ian is over open water right now. So we have just the warm water of the Gulf with Ian completely away from Cuba right now. The entire eye wall, as you can see, a very prominent defined eye wall that shows a very strong hurricane. Wind gusts up to and exceeding 140 miles an hour. Those are just the wind gusts. The constant speed of this storm right now is 120 miles per hour. Again, we are waiting for the latest update and data about Hurricane Ian, but as of right now, 105 knots or 120 miles per hour, 955 millibars in pressure and dropping. So the chances of Ian hitting that category four status like we spoke about yesterday is more than likely going to happen. We are going to see another category four hurricane this season with Fiona being the first one and now Ian being the second. And one thing I want you to notice is that it is moving north at 10 miles per hour. So we're basically crawling a little bit. That's not too fast for a hurricane to be moving, which means between now and the next 24 hours, which means Ian is going to have all that time to strengthen as it approaches the western coast of Florida. Again, we're looking at Cape Coral and or an area in between Tampa a little bit to the north and Cape Coral itself. Now, as I've said many times before, this is not set in stone. Anything can happen last minute to change the course of this hurricane. But right now, the main factor controlling Ian is our jet stream. You can see we have that big dip down into the central part of the eastern half of the United States. And as time goes on, you're seeing that jet stream lift up. We talked about this yesterday, and that is allowing Ian to come in in a northern direction. That's why we're not seeing the direction in the northeast or northwest moving. It's directly north right now because of the lift of our jet stream. Jumping over to Ventu Sky, if we take a quick look at what the time frame, at least from the GFS point of view, is, you are looking at Tuesday right now at 11 p.m. tonight. So Ian is expected to be almost level with southern Florida. At least the eye wall is supposed to be level with Florida by about 11 p.m. tonight. And then watch what happens over the next 24 hours. It's going to take an entire day, which would put us at Wednesday at 11 p.m. right before landfall. That's the estimated times as of right now. There is a little bit of fluctuation of the exact hour. It's still very hard to tell. Some have it at 8 o'clock p.m. Some have it a little sooner and some have it later, as you can see here on the GFS. But again, the main concern right now is the storm surge and the high wind speeds. Now that we are dealing with the possibility of a major landfall as in a category three or above, it won't just be the storm surge that's the issue. We are going to be seeing a counterclockwise spin, which will pull water out of the Cape Coral area and then basically recycle it in a counterclockwise direction, pushing it back into the bay and all those little rivers and inlets. And that is when things are going to get very serious for whatever area that strongest part of the eye wall hits, which is usually the northeast corner. Usually our fastest wind speeds are that northeast quadrant of the storm based on the counterclockwise spin and the fact that it's moving in a northern direction. It almost seems like it's moving northeast in a way, but since passing the threshold of Cuba, as you can see right now, it's basically jumping in a complete northern direction, maybe a slight northeast direction where it's going to turn into Cape Coral. And that's why, once again, this cone of uncertainty term you constantly are hearing on the Weather Channel is exactly this right here. We spoke about this in a few videos. Basically, this main white cone right here is where they expect the possibilities of landfall to take place because it's very hard to actually predict or know exactly where this storm is going to go. A big part of the western coast of Florida is highlighted in red. That is a straight hurricane warning, which means you will be getting hit by a hurricane. There's no doubt about it. And now we see the major status taking it all the way to landfall. Even as early as yesterday, we had the major category just off the coast and then a hurricane symbol as it would make landfall. But now we have a major landfall situation, which now takes parts of central Florida and puts them in the crosshairs for a very strong storm. If we hit as a major storm, a category three or four, that means that it's going to take more time for Ian to weaken after landfall. Usually after the interaction with land, we see a breakdown of the storm. But because of the geography of Florida, the fact that it's a very thin state that sticks out into the ocean, once landfall takes place, chances are the effects of a category one, two, or even a three will be felt even in central Florida. We could be seeing tropical storm situations all the way to the east coast of Florida. And then even crazier is the fact that Ian could reform on the other side of Florida once it makes its way back into the Atlantic Ocean, just to the east of Georgia. Now, I've been watching these satellites very closely and the eye wall of Ian, that is a very important thing to notice because once that interaction with Cuba happened, we were kind of expecting 
expecting possibly a slowdown of the storm, but in fact, it is strengthening as we speak. The new set of data, I'm almost convinced that we will be seeing a Category 4 storm, which begins at 130 miles an hour. So we could be seeing a landfall with wind speeds that high, including the storm surge. Now, that's also very important. The mainstream media is actually talking more about the storm surge than the actual wind effects of this storm. And again, all we need to do is take a look at our scale here, and you can see that if we are at Category 4 or even a 3, we are looking at 9 to 12 feet of storm surge or 13 to 18 feet of storm surge. Either one of those is pretty devastating for any sort of coastline, specifically Florida, which is based solely on the population density. There's so many people that live on the coastlines of Florida. That is why the evacuations are taking place. In fact, I spoke to my cousin who lives in central Florida. I also have other family members that live in Florida as well. And he told me that the Home Depots and all the wood supply stores are going absolutely crazy, even in central Florida. So this isn't just a western coast Florida issue. Because of the geography of Florida, the entire state is in a situation where this storm could affect almost all of it. And then again, we have the possibility of this storm hooking back out into the Atlantic Ocean before turning back into Georgia. You could see it make landfall with western Florida, and it almost wants to get out into the Atlantic, and then it hooks back into the southeast of the United States, but we can't quite predict that yet. The jet stream is going to be the determining factor of whether or not this storm will stick out into the ocean again, possibly reforming, and then making a second landfall. That is something we will talk about in later videos. And again, this is no storm to mess with. If you are anywhere between Tampa and Cape Coral, you need to be listening to your local weather and follow their instructions. If there are mandatory evacuations, that is the most important thing for you to be focusing on right now. We have seen storms weaken upon landfall, but according to the data we have, there is no sign of this taking place. As we approach 2 p.m. tomorrow, that is Wednesday the 28th, here is 5 p.m. And again, now we're reaching that 8 o'clock hour where some models show landfall. But as we're looking at the GFS right now, we're looking more between 8 and 11 p.m. just on top of Cape Coral, maybe a little bit to the north. One thing I want to do very quickly is show you the difference between the GFS and the European model that we have as of right now. So right now we're looking at the European model. If you take a look at what happens here, we get a stall out. It basically sits there for about 6 to 12 hours, making landfall about 950 millibars. That would put this at a category 4 landfall. That would be devastating for any coastline. I'll go ahead and back this up again, and you can actually see the stall out. If I keep the mouse steady, here we go. It stalls out right there and then makes its way across Florida. Again, possibly whipping into the Atlantic again and reforming as a second landfall in Georgia and then going ahead and taking the GFS will do the same exact thing you see the stall out but the barometric pressure is a little bit higher so the European model has this landing as a category four and the GFS has this as of right now making landfall as a cat three right on that border of category four so just to recap we are looking at Ian right now at 120 miles per hour that would take place over a one minute period of time as we are waiting for the new data to come in I'm fairly confident we will be seeing 130 mile per hour winds, which would put it at the category four stage with plenty of room to even get stronger. I don't want to say anything about a category five right now, but we still do have about 24 hours at least before we actually see this landfall. And with the term of rapid intensification, which has been thrown around all over the news, this storm has the ability to grow stronger and continue to strengthen as it approaches the West Coast. There is really nothing else in Ian's path to stop it or to slow it down besides some sort of upper level shear wind which there is no sign of so basically Ian is open to just grow or at least sustain its strength it has now before making that final landfall which as we discussed could be pushed as far as early morning Thursday you are looking at 2 a.m. right now on Ventu Sky and we are still seeing that eye wall just north of Cape Coral so as of right now that is the biggest question when exactly will this thing make landfall and to be honest with you it's almost impossible to predict again my friends those of you that live on the west coast or at least even even in central Florida, the entire state will be affected by this storm one way or another, but you need to continue to listen to your local news. You need to follow evacuation orders. And if you ask me, it's already past time to be prepared for this storm because the way it's looking, it's going to shoot right through central Florida and almost come out the other side, affecting Georgia and the entire Southeast as a whole. Whenever there is a chance of a major hurricane landfall, it needs to be taken very seriously, especially with the fact that the cone of uncertainty is putting a huge portion of Western Florida inside that danger zone.
My friends, that is what I got for you for now. As the data comes in, I will continue to update you, whether that's in the community's post or in another video. This may be one of those storms that we see go into the record books. The letter I once again coming towards Florida and not a lot of time left to prepare. I want to thank you all for taking the time to watch this video. Shout out to Canada. I will bring you more updates soon. Thank you all very much. I'll talk to you soon. Bye bye. Stop right there, my friends. If you have not already, click that subscribe button and don't forget to hit the bell icon. Click all and you will get all notifications from this channel. And trust me, you won't be disappointed.